let's take an object that we have previously used for video and let's take our multi-view sketch and talk about how to create a dimensioned multi-view sketch. So there's a lot of dimensioning guidelines that we could go over and I could just go through each and every one of them but in the end it helps for you to actually see how they're used. So I'm not going to hit all the dimensioning guidelines. I'm only going to hit the dimensioning guidelines that are going to pertain to what we do with this object. Now let's real quick remind ourselves of the dimensioning guidelines and or not the dimensioning guidelines. Uh, let's look at the dimensioning technique. So let's say I have um, a block and I want to create a dimension for the distance across. So for here, I've got a zoomed in view of one edge. And what I'm going to do is from each edge, I'm going to create an extension line. Okay, they should serve as an extension of the original edge of the object, but I want to leave a small gap between the object and the extension line. And that gap helps to make sure that it's not interpreted as an actual part of the shape. I'm going to get a measurement and I'm going to put the measurement right in the middle between the extension lines. And then I'm going to draw a dimension line going from the measurement to the extension line on both sides. The arrows help to show that this one inch measurement goes from this edge all the way to this edge of the object here. So that's how we're going to draw the actual dimensions. So now let's look at the shape here. Now I'm going to use a couple tools to help me with this. One of them is I'm going to have a dial caliper and I'm going to have a ruler. Now you might ask why use both? Well, I'm using three quarter inch linking blocks to make this, which means three quarter, one and a half, two and a quarter, three. This should be exactly three inches across. But when I take the actual measurement, we notice that it's actually more than three inches across. Well, it's a plastic that's molded into this shape and all, not all the cubes are created perfectly equal. So even though they're three quarter inch blocks, this ends up being one eighth of an inch too large if we measure from side to side. So a dial caliper is gonna help us to make a more precise measurement here. So I'm going to have that available and we're going to look at our shapes here. Now when dimensioning, it's easiest to put the dimension on the side that best shows the contour. And one technique that often works for a lot of people is that we put width in the front, height on the right, and depth on the top. So let's start with our width measurement. Um, there's a version of dimensioning that, in which what we do is we create stepped measurements here. So what I want to do is in stepped measurements, I'm looking from my width. So here's the left side, and I'm going to draw a dimension to each of these lines away from one side. Um, so let's start with, we have one, we have two, three, four. So I'm going to create an, ex an extension line here. And I'm going to make it a long one because I can share that extension line. So we have to here, to here, to here, and to here. Okay, so let's take those measurements. Um, so for the first measurement, we have um, 0 0.781, okay. So 0 0.781 for the next one. And, um, uh, you know, it's not going to be such a big deal. I'm, I can just turn around and I'm, I'm measuring to here. So I'm just going to pop this off and measure. So that measurement there is 1.567. So 1.567 inches. 
and I'm then going to need to measure to the third one. So I'm going to do this again. And we have 2.349. 2.349. And for our overall shape, we already looked at it with a ruler, but let's go ahead and get a dial caliper measurement on this one and we see that we have 3.13 okay so there's our width dimensions now in order to go along with the dimensioning guidelines. One of them says that we do not want to duplicate, nor do we want to display dimension in more than one way. So I'm not going to measure this or this or this because I can use these measurements to calculate. So 3.134 minus 2.349 should give me this measurement right there. So no need to put it if we can use math. Okay. The other thing is, notice that I put them here above the shape. The reason why we did that is because another guideline says we want to uh, put the dimensions between adjacent views. So this edge here, when we rotate, is this edge here. So if we take the time to draw our sketch aligned for the front and top, then when we draw the dimensions, they can apply to both the top view and the front view. Okay. That also means for something like this, this edge right here, we can still use the math. 3.134 minus 1.567 gives us this. So there's benefits to making sure everything is lined up with a straight edge before you do this. Okay. So now that we have these dimensions, let's go to our right view. Okay, so on our right view we're going to measure the height and for the overall height uh, that's kind of tricky because we have this empty space so I'm just gonna put a block there to create a surface that we can measure to. Okay, whoops, did not mean to drop that. Okay, so I'm just gonna measure here and I get 2.354. So our overall height, let's get our dimension lines here. Two point three five four inches. And then I need a measurement for this section and a measurement to here. So, I can just measure this part here. So for that measurement, we have 1.566, 1.566. And for the individual cube, we have 0 0.784. 0 0.784. 0 0.784. Okay, and now we have those height dimensions as well. Okay, so the last one we need is we need to get depth. Um, so uh, when placing between adjacent views, here is our top view, okay? This edge here, we rotate to front, or to front, and then rotate to the side, is the same as this edge here, which means the adjacent view on the top side would be over here. So let's get our dimensions. So here's our extension lines. Okay. And now we take a measurement. So the overall measurement is 
1.572. So 1.572. And the smaller dimension, even though we've mentioned we've done single blocks several times, let's take it again. So in this case, that single block again is 0.784. Okay, now it would seem as if we have everything measured here and we have the measurements we need. So let's review the dimensioning guidelines. Whenever possible, put dimensions between adjacent views so that the measurements are shared between the views. It helps if your views are aligned properly before you do that. Whenever possible, put the dimensions on the side that best shows the shape or, or contour of the feature being dimensioned. So in order to measure the width from here to each of these pieces, we put that on this view. Um, as opposed to here, where we really only see these surfaces. Okay, so the overall shape is better here. We want to avoid over dimensioning or duplicating dimensions. So for that, instead of showing measurements for each of these edges, we use math to solve for it. And we want to spread our dimensions out a little bit in order to avoid over cluttering the view. That's not really a dimensioning guideline. It's more just a general practice that a lot of people employ. So with that, we have a fully dimensioned sketch for this object.